This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. In association with Micromax. Nothing like anything. Watching Property It's Hot, your weekend guide to buying smart and designing smart when it comes to your home. Let's run through this week's top stories. Big investments pour into the online home buying business. A chat with JLL's Anuj Puri on his forecast for property markets in NCR and MMR. and the latest gadgets to secure your home against thefts. Our top story this week. Many of you in the search for a property to invest in are logging on to online portals to shortlist your options. And this virtual world of the real estate business is now seeing the entry of several promising startups who are taking on the competition with out-of-the-box ideas. Ankita Sinha and Lakshmi Sivadas do a trend check for us. IBMR Rajiv initially had a tough time finding the right house to rent and also the perfect flatmate to share it with. But that problem was easily tackled by speed flat chatting, an event inspired by the concept of speed dating, except to help find the ideal flatmate and house to rent. Startups like Flatchat that has organized the event are leaving average customers like Rajiv spoilt for choice thanks to the out-of-box services they are offering. I am in Bangalore from last four years and uh, since I have changed my company, uh, it's been two months now and I'm looking for a new flatmate right now. With, uh, with this meetup kind of thing, I've been able to identify some of the people whom I can actually share room right now. I have a shared flat and I'm looking for flatmates. So what I'll do is I'll post on Facebook, Twitter, there'll be 10 other places I post to. But what if Flatchat is an app that you go create a profile and there only you'll see four matches with, with whom you can chat real time and then exchange, hey, I have a flat, are you looking for some? Sites like Flatchat are one amongst many innovative concepts hitting the real estate market thanks to the booming popularity of new online portals. Sites like Housing.com, CommonFlow, Flats.2 have seen major interest from investors in India and abroad. While CommonFlow has already secured over $49 million from investors since its launch in 2007, Housing.com has secured over $140 million in investment. With massive fundings and young minds at the helm, the strategies offered by these sites have begun to revolutionize the real estate market. Even players with standalone portals have begun taking notice, like Tata Value Homes did by tying up with Housing.com very recently. Here the idea was to facilitate people who will come to Housing.com traffic as well as draw tra traffic into this to expand the reach, um, give an uh, enhanced experience to those who are coming into that and through that facilitate it. So what are some of the innovative strategies that have come out thanks to these sites? Well, for starters, they are now offering end-to-end -end solutions by drawing up legal requirements, like rental agreements or for that matter, even helping figure out loan schemes that suit your requirements best. People spend approximately four to five hours outside the registration office trying to register their house. Right? And if you do this nationally across the whole year, it comes to around 50,000 man days of productivity of the average Indian gone down the drain. Right? So housing rental agreement will let you do the same thing online in just five minutes. Apart from this, housing portals are also catering to customers post-buying needs, like community management via groups and mobile applications. You have common flow groups which gives you a complete private social network where you can connect with the other buyers who have already bought and once you start living there you might form an association which handles the day-to-day -day task. So does this mean that the home buyers can now complete the entire cycle of buying a house online? Well not yet. For some aspects such as identity verification and signing registration papers, one still needs to physically go to an office to get things done. 
and that future isn't far off either. With the internet revolution on in full swing, home buyers may soon be able to buy a home and also finish all the formalities from the comfort of their own home. With Lakshmi Sivdas in Bangalore, Ankita Sinha for NDTV. This week we have a micro market report on Faridabad from the National Capital Region. Now a new BJP government is in Haryana and they have just announced a new highway project that will cross through Faridabad. What is this infrastructure project all about and what does it mean for Faridabad's real estate market? Onitam Ojha has the details. From these smoke billowing industrial chimneys to high rises, the skyline of Faridabad has changed. Despite that, Faridabad has to settle for being the poor cousin of Gurgaon and Noida, all thanks to infrastructure bottlenecks and connectivity issues. This, however, could change soon. With the new government focusing on several infrastructure projects, Faridabad could soon play catch up. If this road, which, is, which passes through the entire district of, say, Faridabad, and particularly these new sectors, there will be a very, very good connectivity to this. Already, you know, with the construction of the border, these bridges and uh, then metro, there is a very, very good connectivity to the entire township. The key infra initiatives include developing two national highways, Ghaziabad, Noida, Faridabad, Sona, and Sona, Baldavgar, Tigao, Gautam, Budnagar, Diota, Sikandrabad national highways, extending Delhi Metro's Violet Line from Badarpur to YMCA Chowk in Faridabad, which is expected to be operational by June next year. The Metro Line will be extended further to Gurgaon. Land has been acquired for 9.9 km stretch stuck in Faridabad for the much-awaited Faridabad Noida Ghaziabad Expressway. A 220 kV power substation is planned in Sector 78. Four bridges will come up across the Agra Canal along which the residential sectors of Neherpar is located. Faridabad is also awaiting to reap the benefits from the Faridabad Palwal Investment Zone which is a part of the DMIC. The lack of infrastructure so far has also deterred multinational and IT companies to set shop in Faridabad despite its strategic location and proximity to Delhi. Developers claim that this is now changing. These things will come up. I think so. Uh, the rates will be increased near about 2000 rupees per square foot. And the most important thing is in Faridabad is some IT projects now coming up. Weighted average price in Gurgaon increased from 6,756 rupees per square feet to 7,124 rupees per square feet between January and September this year. Prices in Noida rose from 5,250 rupees per square feet to 5,600 rupees per square feet during the same period. Prices in Faridabad market rose marginally from 3,950 rupees per square feet to 4,330 rupees per square feet. From price point of view, there is a continuous growth, not extraordinary, but it, we take the average of let's say 12 to 17 percent is the average growth rate which from last so many years we have seen in the Faridabad. Right now prices are available in terms of Faridabad, Nehrapar area, maybe 3500 rupees to 4500 rupees per square feet, all inclusive. And home buyers of Faridabad are a happy lot. Faridabad being at the epicenter of uh, Delhi NCR, water, educational hub and uh, as far as connectivity is uh, concerned, <coughs> connectivity has been an issue for some time initially when I bought this uh, property but there have been a lot of developments which have been happening since last three years now. That way I think uh, this is probably the best place to live. The facelift of Faridabad has been long overdue. While both residents and industry are upbeat about the announcements, timely implementation of the projects is what will make Omar Faridabad. In Faridabad, Oini Tamoja, NDTV. It's time to bring you the expert voice of the week. Anush Puri, chairman and country head of real estate consultancy JLL India, is known for his precise and practical assessment of the health of India's real estate industry. So as the Indian parliament gets rolling with its winter session, we asked him what the real estate industry is expecting on the legislative front and whether real estate sentiment will see a turnaround as we usher in the new year. Listen in. The real estate regulation bill, which, uh, you know, as you know, is 
uh, line pending with the Rajya Sabha and uh, approval of the President of India. Uh, and in that, we want a crucial stakeholder, which is the government sector, to be included within the real estate uh, regulation bill. Uh, likewise, a number of reform initiatives to allow NHB to fund the banks more, to allow NHB funding towards the developers, to allow more mortgage at a micro level for the EWS and the LIG funding to be done to look at uh, look and see whether affordable housing can be treated like a SEZ and you provide all the tax uh, incentive both physical and financial uh, to the developers so that they can propagate more affordable housing. We're seeing a lot more investors uh, coming in from overseas talking to companies like JLL do we see actual money come into the ground? Perhaps not. The uh, next wave of investors who are coming in are not really those who came in in the first wave. So this is a completely different breed of investors who are coming in. They are a lot more patient. Um, their ability to understand India is a lot more there. They're not the hedge fund type you know, who came in early and exited because they found India risky or perhaps had a very long gestation period. You know, these, are, these are sovereign funds who are coming in, uh, who have a long gestation period. Their also appetite is to go out and buy fixed income and you know take lesser risk on the on on the development side certain micro markets in delhi ncr doing very well um, certain other micro markets not doing well and that's particularly because of the price range uh, i think if it is priced nicely it's doing exceptionally well if it is really priced in that luxury premium sector that's where the pain is coming in I am very bullish of Navi Mumbai uh, on several accounts. You know, one, it's got a great physical infrastructure. Uh, second, you know, airport hopefully in the next four or five years should come up. Uh, but what is more exciting is that we're finding a lot of the IT corporates setting up large campuses. There are four or five SEZs in Navi Mumbai. All of them are beaming with activity. And when you compare Navi Mumbai, it's a fraction cheaper than Pune. And you can keep tuning in to us every weekend on Property It's Hot for such expert industry views. Coming up next after a quick break, smart security devices for today's smart homes.